What's up guys, back here, episode number 16 in the Let's Play series. We are getting ever so close to that epic level, or episode number 20, where we know what spells we're going to have. So get your votes in, post them down below in the comment section, which spells you want me to use. We are only going to level up three spells ever in this account. I have chosen Hammer Strike, so you got two choices down below, so make sure that your voice is heard. So let's see what we've got going on today. We have some upgrades done. Oh, our throw room just went up to level 5. Big day today. That means we have everything else that we can start upgrading even more. Not enough gold there. So we should be able to unlock this guy. Excuse me, a tavern there. We're going to do some real quick upgrades um, right now since we have three workers. Our defenses, if you are just tuning in, we don't really worry about defenses whatsoever. Uh, most of our arrow towers are going to be level 2 now. Every time that we log on here, we try to actually upgrade quick and easy things. So our rating is around 10 minutes or so for rating. And in that process, we collect enough loot to do some bigger upgrades. So we try and do these smaller ones right here, as we are only upgrading everything while we're actually you know, recording. Uh, I'm not doing any little cheating here or there, coming on, playing at all. The only thing that I will ever come on this series to do is to collect bread and then log right off. Everything else will be completely recorded, so if you want to see how uh, we got to this stage of the game and why we have these kind of troops, why we have this kind of spells, why we have this kind of armor, weapons, things like that, you can check out the past series episodes to see our progression in its entirety in this Let's Play series. So getting the throne room up to level 5 is a big deal. It, I mean, it happened really, really quick now. I remember way back when the game launched, about two and a half years ago maybe now, it was it took a long time to get the throne room 5. The gold was so small, the amount of gold that you found out there was just kind of like tiny and you got to struggle for gold and fight for that you know, 100,000, 50,000. You had to use a gold shield to, to keep your gold. The game has gotten so much, you know, generous, better uh, for you know, early level players, starting off players, than it was, you know, two and a half years ago about. And that's a good thing. I mean, obviously you have to allow the new players coming into the game to speed up the progression a lot faster versus people that have been playing for two years. I mean, you got to have them be able to catch up somewhat uh, to be competitive to those higher end players. Obviously, it's going to take us a long, long time to catch up to anyone you know in the 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 trophy range. Uh, 2,000 trophies will probably take us a few months. 3,000 will probably take us maybe six months. And getting up into the 4,000 trophy range could take us you know seven, eight months. I don't know. We don't know how long it will take us to get up that far. Uh, Getting to the 5,000 trophies might be impossible, and we might not be able to catch up to the 5,000 trophy people uh, without, you know, a, a year or two of playing. We will see here. Uh, we are going to uh, take this for the long haul. So we are, are not going to give up. Nice helmet here. Picked up another cape, and that's going to be an upgrade for us as well. So early on here, all these hero gears, we're just grabbing them for free from the Chamber of Fortune. You don't ever want to buy anything from the Granny Shop. The Granny Shop, right here, will sell you a special legendary hero gear, and it's really good. But, hero gear gets progressively better as you level up your king. So, we are level, like, I don't even know what level we are right now. Let me take a look. We are all level 24. So as we get to level 30, all the hero gear that we have at level 24 is going to be obsolete and just horrible trash. So you can see a huge increase there, 100 and something. This one gives us a lot more leadership. Let's go ahead and put that on right now. Let's see if we have anything else in here. All right, so that does it for there. So we're just going to keep slowly but surely collecting hero gear. Our tavern there got complete. Nice. All 
We have 170,000 now, so we can upgrade hopefully something. Wizard Tower needs to get to level 6 to do that. For that, we need 250,000. I know we can upgrade a wave here. And upgrading your waves is very important. Even if we're not upgrading our defenses at all whatsoever, or, or very, very small, smallly. I don't know what that is. They're very slowly upgrading our defenses. Uh, having your waves is a big thing. The, the waves will help tremendously. Waves are the most important aspect of your defense in the game, actually. So you want to make sure that you have your waves built up as much as possible. And it also does not require a worker to build up your waves. So that's a great thing to do. As you can see, we have three workers, and we're probably not going to get many more workers in this account as we're, you know, not spending any money whatsoever, going completely 100% free to play. The workers can only be bought with gems, which typically you have to use premium currency, money, cash, dala dala bills to uh, to buy those gems. And it's just we're not going to do that, so we're not going to have a lot of workers like in my other game. Uh, we spent a good chunk of money, spent around a little bit over 100, 150 bucks, I think, on that game. And we had like eight workers and, you know, lots of stuffs. Max that alliance chamber. But you see, we're not going to have, or uh, alliance tower, we're not going to have that here. We're going to have to really, really play smart. We're going to have to play efficiently with a small amount of workers. So any time that we can upgrade something without using a worker is great. At this stage, we have to take out the Fire Masters. The Fire Masters are extremely deadly to what we're attacking with. We're attacking with just a ton of little miniature knight troops. These mini knights. The cannons aren't very effective at all against them as they shoot so slow. So we're going to gather up. Typically, you gather them up like this, but when you start getting into... Uh, you know, pyromancers and frosters like this. Having them bunched together is not necessarily a good thing because they do splash damage, which hits all those knights, takes them out. But if we can have them bunched up together for the towers, run up ahead like we are doing here, kill the pyromancer, and then now sit back and recover some, that will work out. That's kind of what we need to do in this situation. And now we need to wait back here for our spells to come up and to regenerate. You see, we have a sliver of HP left on our king. So just hold off. Come a little bit. Let the second wave get up there. Got that stuff there. Do a firestorm. And then a hammer strike. And then we've taken them out. So we're not going to get the whole 100% here. We're not going to take down the castle gate. But this was a 200 and 20 metal base, if I remember correctly. That's a lot of metals. We were attempting to take this down so we can earn some free gems with the tournaments. Didn't happen. Uh, I need to pay more attention to what's in the bases. Pyromancers are going to be pretty much unstoppable at this level against us and our troops and our spells. We don't have anything else that we can necessarily do against Pyromancers. So this is going to be a very, very easy base everything's all up close and bunched together I think um, saying it's 142 medals which means they're saying it's pretty tough but he has uh, poorly chosen troops and everything is all bunched up so you can multi hit all these things with multiple spells so the cannons they need a choke point to sit through and be safe and protected this one he's just having him sit behind his barricades and then the ogre is very inefficient at this low level ogres are horrible so we'll show you this base Ogres just get disintegrated, nearly half HP on one hammer strike. They're super, super slow. And for a base like this, we can pop out some cannons ourselves. Because we don't have to worry about any real uh, choke points. Apologize for the dog. We need a muzzle. Muzzle the dog. Nah, it's kind of cruel. We don't do that. We don't do that. So we've gotten to most of his defenses here. We're going to go into the corner. We're going to firestorm. 
and then we're going to hammer strike. And the hammer strike, as you can see, did about 50% on the ogre. It's good we brought out some cannons because he's got some gargoyle towers there. We're going to sit back, recover a little bit with our king, and then kick back the bombs. Now, period. This is. Look at that. Hammer strike hit down four targets. Actually, five. It hit the barricade over there, it looks like. Did about 50% on all those targets. Easily going to crush this base with, uh, you know, 45 seconds left or so. Come over here. Kill both towers. Get 100%. Yeah, very, very easy base there. Again, poor troop selection, poor base layout. There's a lot of poor base layouts and designs and easy gold early on here because, uh, I mean, defenses, people don't really understand what good defenses are. And most people don't really care. It's more of an offensive style. You know, you go and you're going to... Attack people, raid, have fun, kill things. So you may think our defense really, really sucks, but the thing is, ours is like a trap-based design. So if we build up our waves and we build up these towers, they're going to do a lot of damage around the castle gate here. The castle gate is very, very strong with towers all around it right here. They're all going to be shooting arrows. We can actually go and show you something that we haven't done yet. We can test out our own defense and show you how much damage that we're actually going to be throwing at opponent kings. So if you were to go ahead and just rush up like you typically would in this situation. You're going to be ahead of your troops and the damage will just slowly add up over time. When you get to the castle gate, you're going to see there's Arrow towers over there shooting you. You got arrow towers over here shooting. And there's a pretty decent amount of damage coming out from this setup. All these little, all the knights are just, are dying. The king is almost dead now. We'd have to scream and run back. And you can see all our knights are almost dead right there as they come up through here. The arrows are doing a really effective job at taking down our troops. So it's not as easy as it looks. Again, these are all level 2 arrow towers. Very, very weak. I think we have one level 4 arrow tower in here as well. Oops. And so you can uh, retry. Do it again. You can use scrolls. And it's a really, really great thing to test out your base. So our base may look really, really weak, but it's actually not that bad of a base. For the amount of money and gold that we've put into it, it's actually a really, really good base. I think we have enough for one more raid, maybe, maybe two. Bread here. So all the workers finished. We need tons of gold now. 226,000. That is an insane amount of gold. So this is going to be awesome. If we can take this base down, we should have looked at the mini map. Um, I did not look at it, so I don't have any idea what we're fighting here. That's a bad, bad mistake on my part. Let's hope that two cannons and a whole bunch of knights work out really, really well. That's kind of my go-to strategy right now is two cannons and a bunch of knights. You never want to have more than two cannons at this stage because they'll be overkill and damage. They have such a low, small, slow, slow, slow rate of fire that typically, uh, you know, any more than two cannons will be wasted. 
Most buildings will go down in one or two shots. Scream and grab them together. So at that point, we weren't fast enough to get ahead of the, the troops there. And sadly, that scream really didn't work for us. One of the cannons went down. But it looks like we're going to be able to take down the whole base here. Little to no problems. I'm going to scream again to give some protection, some room for our cannon to get up here. And chop down the tower. Hopefully, I think it's 100% there. And with the gold bonus, we're going to get a lot more than 48,000 gold, guys. That's sometimes a display error. It's like when you get too much gold, they're like, oh, whoa, we don't know what to do. It's like craziness. It's madness. Too much gold. So we got 450,000 gold now. We're almost maxed out on gold. Let's go and upgrade our wizard tower to level 6 for our troops. Let's see here. Let's go and upgrade the... Oh, we don't have enough yet. We can actually join into the alliance war. This is going to be our very first alliance war here. We'll do uh, some more raids on this in the next episode. That's really nice because right now the bread cost for these raids are half so we can raid these guys if there's any decent loot typically there's not good loot at all in the alliance wars uh, but you do get skulls which give us magic chests which give us a free gold so let's go after this guy right here and also a, a great way to earn medals too so the attacking these bases at 50 percent bread cost is going to give us a lot of medals if we put in the time to, you know, attack bases, we should easily be able to win the uh, Bronze League, potentially jump up into the Silver, get our our star there. In this situation, the cannon is going to be very, very bad. He's going to sit right there, and he's going to get shot away by the ranged DPS. So this kind of a base layout is very, very effective at taking down cannons. What we have to do here is we have to make it past these barricades get on to the other side and then protect our cannon by killing off all of these troops that are sitting on the other side over here at this point we're gonna recover some and then bring out a cannon Kill that next wave, and we're going to bring out another cannon. And they should be able to clean up those towers that we left behind there. I'm going to sit and recover. Screen to make the guys a little bit faster. And then again, sit and recover because we're coming up to the castle gate. So think of the castle gate like the big bad boss. And the boss has got lots of power, lots of HP. We need to be strong to take on the boss. So now we're going to come up here. It's mano y mano, one on one with the boss. The castle gate tower. Let's see, we're slowly damaging and he's... Doing a lot of damage to us as well. In a situation like when you're all by yourself like this, you want to make sure that you have spells ready for uh, the troops that he spawns out the waves. 
There's the reinforcements. The cannon takes it down. All hail the cannon. So not bad. 23,000. Pick up some skulls here. And nothing else in the next chest. Those 78 pearls would have been really nice. I think the monks works well on defense and offense. So much you can do 16 months, but I'm loving the monk. He gets too far. Alright, so we need one more raid to get some more money. 250k. Next episode, whoa, 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 those 218,000. We will jump into the Alliance Wars. And we'll do tons and tons of Alliance Wars raids and base demolitions, destructions. Because again, most of these bases, even if they are higher trophy level levels, trophy rankings than you, uh, are going to be beatable. The defenses in the lower level, under a thousand, are very, very weak for the most part. Can't wait to figure out what spells you guys are going to choose for me. So we can finally start leveling up something else. Right now our spells are, are all like level 1 or 2 besides Hammer Strike. I definitely feel the pain of having these low level spells. The sword right here, as you can see, uh, can barely kill the, the Froster and barely kill the Archer. And, I mean, Sword Ring's only effective if it gets that one-shot kill off on a lot of troops. So if it, if it fails to kill those guys in one shot, it's really like a wasted spell. So against the Pyromancers, it's kind of worthless right now. Against the Arb Blasters, I don't believe it was one-shotting them. So a couple hits, and then a Cannonball take down the arrow tower that tower is going down so see we had one cannon it lived the entire fight there did tons and tons of damage and we just leveled up to finish off the episode good stuff Good stuff. We failed in the chest. So the chests are now going back to their actual real values before we saw like every chest that we got was always like got them all, got them all, got them all. It was just bizarre because normally you fail so much on those chests. So let's go ahead and upgrade Troop Academy. And we have one more worker. We upgrade the castle gate. Make that even deadlier. And that's going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you check out some of the other videos in the series or some of the higher level gameplay for Revolt 2 if you are interested in that.